Okay, so this tutorial is on the kidneys. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the uh, relations of the kidneys. Um, so it's location in relation to other structures in the abdomen. And I'll talk about some of the external features of the kidneys. So in another tutorial, I'll talk about the internal structure of the kidneys. So the function of the kidneys is really to filter blood and excrete waste. Um, and excess water is urine. And it also regulates blood pressure, blood pH, blood volume and um, it's important in salt balance and sort of electrolyte balance. So let's just bring some other structures in and take a look at the um, sort of relative location of the kidneys. So you can see here that they sit um, sort of on the posterior abdominal wall um, and they sit either side of the vertebra. So they sit at roughly the level of T12 down to L3. So we've got T12 up here and L3 is down here. So they're not quite shown as extending quite that far, but um, most textbooks say they extend from T12 down to L3. So if I just bring in the rest of the abdominal organs, fade away the muscles again, we can see how the kidneys sit uh, behind these organs. So they sit quite far back in the abdomen. So they sit on the posterior abdominal wall. And the kidneys are retroperitoneal, so they're not contained within the folds of peritoneum, which some of the other organs uh, of the abdominal cavity are. So each kidney has a superior and an inferior pole. And medially, you've got this kind of vertical slit where various structures enter and exit the kidney. And this is called the hilum. So the structure you can see here um, coming out of the kidneys is called the ureter. But you also have the artery and vein, the renal artery and vein entering the kidney. And you've also got uh, nerves and lymphatics. So I've just brought in the uh, cardiovascular system here. And you can see the, the large inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta here. And coming off, off it, you can see the, the renal veins and arteries on either side entering the hilum together with the ureter. So I mean on this model it's not really demonstrated that well, they're kind of shown just sticking onto the side of the kidney, but they actually enter medially into this vertical little slit um, into the uh, inside of the kidney, and this is called the hilum. So the hilum lies at um, vertebral level L1, so this is uh, L1 vertebra. So we'll just take a quick look at some of the posterior relations of the kidney. So if we look at the back, we can see that the 12th rib lies behind the kidney. And if I bring in some other structures like some of the musculature, we can see some of the muscles which sit behind it. So you can see the psoas major on either side sits behind it. So it's this muscle here on either side. And you've got the diaphragm, so the posterior parts of the diaphragm sitting behind the kidney. You've got the quadratus lumborum, which is this muscle here. Um, so it's kind of obscured in this model by the huge psoas major muscle. So if I just rotate it around to the front, you can see that the quadratus lumborum is hidden because the psoas major is so big in this model. Um, and then you've also got the transversus abdominis muscle, which is not shown in this model. And then you've got a couple of nerves. So you've got the subcostal nerve, the iliohypogastric nerve, and the ilioinguinal nerves. So you can see these uh, two here. So you can see the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerve here. So that's what lies ben uh, behind both the kidneys. But what lies in front of the kidneys is different for the right and the left kidney. So we'll take a look first at the right kidney. So if you look at the kidneys from this view, you can see that the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney. And there's a reason for this. It's because of this large organ, the liver, which sits on top of it. So the right lobe of the liver is quite big and it sort of pushes it down. So the, the right kidney is a little bit lower than the left kidney. So I'll get rid of that, and we can see what else is in front of the kidney and the gallbladder. Um, so you can see the colon runs in front of the kidney. So you can see this the 
hepatic flexure or the right colic flexure lies in front of the kidney. So it runs in front of the lower part of the kidney, the inferior pole of the kidney. So that's the hepatic flexure. Get rid of that. And now you can see that the, the descending part of the duodenum sits in front of the medial part of the kidney. So the descending part of the duodenum is retroperitoneal as well, and it sits um, right up against the kidney. And if I just rotate the model around a bit further, you can see the um, this thing on top of the kidney. So this is the suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland. So I've just brought those structures back and we'll take a look at what sits in front of the left kidney. So you can already see a lot of it anyway. So the other side of the colon sits in front of the left kidney. So we've got the splenic flexure or the left colic flexure. So I'll just get rid of that. And then you can see the stomach and the spleen sitting in front of it. Get rid of those two. And then you can see the end of the pancreas sitting in front of it as well. So the pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure. Whereas the stomach and spleen are both intraperitoneal structures. And then it's also got this suprarenal gland sitting on top of it. So not the, not the other adrenal gland. So hopefully that's orientated you a bit and you know exactly where the kidneys lie now. Um, and next we'll talk a little bit about um, the capsules of the kidney and the blood supply to the kidney. Then we'll do another tutorial on the um, internal structure of the kidney.